Hello guys, welcome back. I guess I'm gonna start using the word heathen more often. It's it's kind of almost a done thing. I'm not sure how I feel about the word. We shall put it to the side, but it's perhaps an option now. The Norse the Norse gods have been making sure I know unclaimed and dragging me off to do this, that, and the other, so um we worked in VR, and it was really the first time I've worked with them in VR ever since I truly committed to them. We've tried this before, it hasn't worked, but this time it definitely feels different. It feels like I'm actually spiritually ready to commit to one group of gods, and it was really different, therefore, building them stuff, because this was to the group of gods that I'm now dedicated to, and, you know... I'm really overwhelmed, and I'm thinking, I've always tried this, and I always fell, and five minutes from now, I'll be bouncing back out of heathenry, and, but, you know, I, I am happy with the gods I have, so I did the build for them, and we're building onto Club 22, which, if you've been keeping up, already has a carousel and a whole bunch of other stuff, a farm, too, but, you know, um, it needed more stuff. We needed to add temples. We needed to out add outdoor temples. And, of course, Odin has the best and highest place. He has the eagle's nest. And I just felt super safe as soon as I got that done. And he accepted it. He was, like, he could feel, like, real happy with it. And I could feel he accepted it. And it's strange. I've been feeling the move forward in VR like I haven't before, I guess, because they're, like, it's playtime's over your hours. <laughs> Um, I felt fine. I felt energized to work on the rest of the temples, and I'm not even sure who half the gods are that I talk to. Shows you how good a heathen I'll make. But, you know, one would want a temple here, and another would want a temple there. And you can spot Loki's temple. It's the giant chair with the jack-o'-lantern in it. And he's like, yeah! And it's like Kitty Wampus, too, and he's like, yeah. So, you know, they all have temples all around the map, so they're almost entirely ringing the the main hub, which I I think that's how burial mounds used to go. Like, I think, if uh, please, if I'm wrong, correct me, but it used to be the main ancestor that was venerated would be in the middle, and then it went in a concentric ring out from that. I think that's how it worked. Correct me if I'm wrong. It didn't used to be like our graveyards today. Your ancestors really mattered, and it wasn't like today where everybody's buried in all these. You had the the oldest ancestors, the most important ones, the chiefs and everything would be like in the super special place, and then like often everybody buried around them. Everybody kind of lived in the afterlife in the marrows marrows in the barrows the way they lived in life and then it started to change i think over time and kings and everybody would be in special areas and other people would be in other areas but i think originally it was because the first humans they know we live like wolves in fact there's some good damn good evidence that we're only alive today as a species because we saw these stupid two-legged wolves that didn't know how to hunt and they taught us how to hunt and they taught us how to live as a pack and we recognized animals smarter than us when we saw them so we actually live because wolves adopted us so that's kind of interesting thing to think about i know i'm getting off topic anyhow loki's back here wolves are never off topic on this channel anyhow I got all their, you know, all their things built, and we've got Club 22 in the middle, and we still got some more change to spend. I think we're at 488, so if they want, like, one more nice thing added, because there's plenty in the main, main house, and there's plenty of temples around. If they want, like, one more neat thing added, they already have the train and the, the, <laughs> the merry-go-round. <laughs> I spoil them, I know. And I'm feeling giddy, because it was, like, they were all being really, really affectionate. It was the first time I added an ancestral temple. I asked Loki if he thought it was a good idea. And he's like, yep. And I said, yeah, but my ancestor's Catholic. He's like, tough titties, they're getting a temple. So... <laughs> Loki's not going to argue about this. He gets sometimes something, I ask him, and something's not important to him, and the next day it's deadly serious important. It depends on what aspect you're dealing with, and this was definitely the aspect of tough titties are getting a temple. <laughs> so they have a temple. 
So it was like, you know, just talk to the ancestors a little bit. And I made sure it felt like all the gods were happy. And you could feel like this is, I know how crazy this sounds. Because you've got this headset strapped on your head. And yet when it's on your head, you feel the VR space around you, even though it doesn't exist. It's real and it's not. And you can feel these gods, like, all moving through. Like, she finally opened this for us. And it was like, I felt this shift. And it was like all 12 maps, and this isn't possible, but all 12 maps connected. And this isn't possible. We do have gateways to jump from map to map most of the time, but it was like they all connected. And it's all one mega map now. So imagine all 12 mansions being one mega build. And they're happy now. There, There's room enough for everyone. Land spirits, ancestors, gods, goddesses, whomever. And it's all Nordic territory. <laughs> they made sure it's all Nordic territory. Loki's like, I can pee on things if you want. Make it smell real good in here. I'm like, no, no, thank you. But I could. So, yeah, it's Loki. Um, Were you even a fox form when you offered? I got, no. <laughs> I was hoping it would be fox form. You're gross. Anyhow, he's happy. His brother happy. A bunch of Norse gods I haven't worked with in a while had dropped by. I know you haven't heard of Hynir or Heimdall or anybody in the Dog Sage, but they drop by. And so it's just been getting to know the gods and welcoming them home and feasting with them and the ancestors. And by feasting, I mean we made spam in the oven. But, you know, they're happy. They're Once you're getting along with them, they are. it's my fault for always wanting to rebel. They're the least demanding group of gods. They were happy to have spam. They were happy. They're happy to have those damn noodles I get from Walmart because I cook the noodles in the oven and uh, might as well give you recipe time. Um, those noodles that you get like in a pack of 12 and they have the kimchi and stuff in them. They're like, I think like a buck a pop or something. So these are kind of posh, but we order one or two packs a month. Um, it's kind of posh. You know where we are. <laughs> Um, you make them in the microwave, and I put extra water in it, and then I get out a separate bowl, and I put a little garlic powder, and a little onion powder in it, and a little bit of soy sauce. And then after I cook the noodles and let them sit for a minute, I pour off the water into there, and I mix it up, and there's this, like, sauce packet in these noodles, and it's always way too much damn sauce for these noodles, because they're really kind of delicate, actually. So I put the rest of the sauce in the soup, and I mix it up. It's like the best damn soup. So we get soup and noodles for lunch every day. Well, at least when we have the packets. So they're happy. They're all content. You could do it with, we're going to, you know, be frugal. You can do it with just regular ramen, too. Just, you know, drain off the water after you boil the ramen and make a soup out of it. And you can have your noodles separate, and you can have your soup. You don't have to sit there every day suffering through Raymond noodle soup. I know it gets to be a bit much. Um, and then you can, like, add peanut butter or whatever you have on hand in ketchup packets. They're not fussy. They don't care. So, we just figured we'd catch you up. But I just, I feel like I'm home now. And I had seen something on Reddit of all places. I know Reddit. And I think it was the gods answering me. If you keep praying to the gods, they will answer you, but in their own sweet time. Not like, I need to know this now. It may be weeks or months. It might feel like a year or something. But there was this woman that was Catholic, and she kept bouncing between being Catholic and being Reddit. And I almost felt, being, being Catholic, being Reddit, being Catholic, being heathen. It almost felt like she was playing poke the bear with the heathens, but some really nice former Catholics, because quite a few of us end up being heathens, I've noticed that, answered her and said, you know, it's, it's a thing of you're trying to compare these gods to the god you grew up with. Please stop, for one. And for two, you're told that God's all-powerful and perfect, where we're told these gods are human and like us and understand our emotions. Do they know everything? No. They, you know, they're not all-knowing, they're not all-powerful, they're not all places and in all time at once, but they still manage to take care of us quite well. And there's a whole bunch of them. So, you know, you can, you can pick and choose. And she picked on ancestor veneration. I'm like, you know, having grown up Catholic? I mean, what the hell kind of flavor of Catholic were you? Roman Catholic, it's like a creepy cult to your ancestors. It's like, it's not like, oh, I love my Nana. It's like, Nana. 
and you have Nana's pictures and candles, and you just get kind of goofy every time you see Nana's picture. <laughs> and I guess why my ancestors avoid us when we're Catholic. It's creepy, obsessive. When somebody dies in a Catholic family, all the Catholics are going like, yep, a shrine is built to the dead. We're we're creepy, obsessive with our dead. We're, we're already worshiping our dead. We say we're not, but we are. And we already have statues of all these dead people that were apparently really nice anyway. So it's already ancestor veneration. It's just we pretend it's not because saying that, you know, St. John Neumann appeared and healed someone sounds totally believable. But saying Grand Nana came and gave me good advice just for some reason doesn't work with us. Though, yeah, if you watch It's a Miracle, people's ancestors appear as angels, too. So I'm like, you know, it's kind of like the same belief. She didn't have to get into semantics with it, but she did. And it just, it felt good to give the ancestors something. I, I have stuff, but it's never quite clicked for me. And I told them when I pulled, built the temple, I just wanted to acknowledge them. Like, I wanted to acknowledge them with the food. I understand if we never do click, but I wanted them to know they're appreciated. Because in heathenry, a big thing is... You wouldn't be here without your ancestors. And as I'm building these temples, I'm starting to cry because I'm like, we wouldn't be here without our ancestors and we wouldn't be here without the gods. And Lucky's walking behind me like, oh, sweet Lord, baby Jesus, here we go. And he's like, you've known this all the time. What's the matter with you now? So he's not having any of it. Lucky usually doesn't do well with tears. He's very kind and loving, but he'll just give you little pets like, there, there. Odin hears Sleipnir calling him in leaves. It's usually one of the goddesses or one of the other gods that'll come over and give you give you pets. And then sometimes, just to prove me wrong, they'll give you a hug and they'll say they know and they'll tell you to cry out. <laughs> but I feel really up and I feel really energized because it felt like it was just the right time to give them stuff. I told them I'm tired of being drug around. And yeah, I had thought today for a hot second that it felt like I was collapsing because all the gods had come towards me last night and it was too much and I thought I was going to try out to reach out for a smodius, but I could tell I couldn't even reach out. It was I was being blocked and somebody was answering me and they were really pissed off that I was talking to somebody outside the Pantheon, but they were holding it together because I was home at least and I think it was Heidegger, I think? I don't know. I, I, I'm not even sure if I talked to Billy and V today or who the hell I talked to. I talked to a lot of them today, and it's not, you know, I'm super special. It's, I died at least twice that I know. Please don't try that on purpose. And, you know, it's kind of like you're, you're more, more open, but anybody can do it, guys. Absolutely anybody can do it. It's like, I tell you to practice every night before you go to sleep talking to Loki. Practice talking to Loki. Imagine you're with him. That's why we're going to do this before we're asleep, because everybody else can go fuck off and leave you alone. <laughs> it's this channel. And you're talking to Loki, and imagine having conversation with him. And do that as often as you need to until you open the door to communication. Then you'll be like, God damn it, why didn't she tell me he never shuts up? <laughs> it might take days, weeks, months, years. It can take a long time to undo that social programming but if you think back through your life you probably had an imaginary friend imaginary you probably had people you talked to you probably had dreams of your ancestors or dreams of the gods or other people to me the dream role is the same role we're going to it's from everything i've experienced it's like it's the same exact place other people will disagree that's fine i don't have to be right Look, he's like, yeah, you do. So, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, you can get there. You can get there. I don't have really any special things. I mean, yeah, I've died twice. But if anything, that should have short-circuited any abilities I have. So, you know, just just keep at it. And just keep, you know, doing it. I keep getting references to poetry. And one of you would say and you were getting poetry, too. Well, Odin's connected to poetry. Bragi, of course. Probably many gods we've lost. Um, and I got that sermon from that UU church for poetry as well, and it talked about poetry, and then there was poetry on the radio, like, last night and today, so, and it's also Women's Right to Vote Day, it was the way, you know, when the suffragists finally succeeded and got ladies the right to vote, so, yay ladies, so it's a lot to unpack today, but 
we just wanted to get you guys caught up. We're having a really good one. It's just, it's kind of overwhelming, and I want to cry a lot, but in a good way. So if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.